Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Code Chef. If you are interested in competitive programming and want to learn and master data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Every week we'll post Code Chef problem explanations, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live problem solving sessions. But before we get started, here's a reminder to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Great, now that you have subscribed, let's get started. Today we will be solving the problem Chef and Closure, which is a simple problem and it belongs to the August cook-off. So let us see the problem statement. Here the problem statement says that uh, you are given an array with n integers and uh, you have to tell the chef whether this array is closed under multiplication or not. Now what does that mean for an array to be closed under multiplication? So we are given the explanation here that uh, for every sequence of uh, that the array can form and if you multiply all the elements uh, in that sequence then whatever the answer of that multiplication we get that element must be present in the array. So we have to print 1 if uh, we can get uh, the array as closed under multiplication and 0 otherwise. So if you uh, like if I show you an example of how it works so we have this array here 1 0 3 so we will write down all the uh, sequences that this array can form sequences means like 1 0 then 1 3 uh, then 0 3 and then 1 0 3 so if you do 1 into 0 you'll get 0 so this 0 is present as one of the elements of this array Similarly, for 1 into 0 into 3 and for other elements also, you can easily see that whatever answer we are getting, all these uh, elements are present in this array as uh, a, like it is a part of the array. So, that is what we mean by uh, an array being closed under multiplication. So, this condition should be satisfied for all the sequences that are being formed uh, for any array. So now that we have seen the example, let us see that uh, what are the elements which if being present in the array, then array will never be able to be closed under multiplication. So the first thing is that if the array contains more than one element with absolute value greater than one. So note here that the array elements can have value greater than minus 10 to the power 9 and less than 10 to the power 9. So this is the uh, range of values that the array can have. It can have negative values as well. This is, the, this is given in the constraint section of the problem statement. So here um, the first thing that you need to know is that if the array contains more than one element with absolute uh, value greater than 1. It means if we have some array like 1, 0, 3 and uh, like suppose minus 4 or say 5. So here we have 3, minus 4 and 5. Now if we multiply these numbers, like for if you take any um, example of any sequence out of this array, if we multiply any of these numbers, like 3 into 4 is going to give us minus 12 because here we have minus 4. So it means that uh, we can never form, uh, like we can never have this kind of array. It will never be closed under multiplication. So that is one thing. Now the second thing is that if the array contains minus 1 twice but it does not contain 1. So if we have an array such that we have minus 1, minus 1 and then we have any other like digit. So we have any other integers. Now whenever we form this particular sequence which is minus 1 into minus 1, this sequence will definitely be formed, right? So minus 1 into minus 1 will give us 1. But in the array we do not have the element 1 so then this array will also never be closed under multiplication. So if we have uh, minus 1 twice then we also need to have 1 in the array for it to be considered uh, for closed under multiplication. Now the third one is that if A contains minus 1, if the array contains minus 1 and another element whose value is larger than 1. So you can take the same example here if it contains minus 1 and if it contains 5 and if we multiply these two elements then it will give us minus 5 but minus 5 is not present in the array right uh, and if we uh, like suppose you know you can argue that we can place minus 5 here so will it not work so if you have placed minus 5 here okay then minus 1 into 5 
this for this sequence it is definitely going to work but what about this sequence what about minus 5 what minus 5 into 5 when this sequence is formed it will give us minus 25 but minus 25 is not present in the array right because we have already um, concluded in the first statement that if the array contains more than one element with absolute difference uh, with absolute value greater than one then it can never be closed under multiplication so you can see that these are the kinds of values that the array cannot have now after discussing this we will see the uh, values that the array can have and uh, it can be considered under uh, closed for multiplication so the array can have any number of zeros that is perfect because any number multiplied to zero will always give you zero now it can have any number of ones that is also fine then the array can only have a single number greater than one so that also we already discussed that uh, if it has like uh, two numbers greater than one then it can never be closed under multiplication right because if we multiply these two numbers four into five it will give us some greater number which will definitely not be present in the array so that's why uh, an array can only contain a single number greater than one and that is the absolute value is greater than one so if more than one minus one then one must be present so that also we already discussed that if there are uh, two minus ones or say three minus ones then we definitely need uh, one as the element in the array because minus one into minus one will give us one so that is the problem guys so what are the kinds of uh, arrays that will be valid so these are the kinds of arrays that will be valid here you can see that we have uh, 100610 so we have number of zeros and number of ones and we have just one element uh, whose absolute value is greater than 1. Similarly here we have minus 1, 1 and 0 a combination of all of these. So now you pick up any uh, any sequence you will always be able to get a particular uh, element as the multiplication which will be present in your array. So now the question is that how will you check whether the array is closed under multiplication or not. So now coming to the conclusion that what kind of values are present in the array such that we can check that uh, you know it is closed under multiplication or not. So we what we can do we can instead of checking for all the sequences of the array we can ch just check for the pair of sequences. It will give us the same answer how because the type of um, numbers that will be present in the array that we have discussed are only ones. 0 minus 1 and only one number which is greater than 1 right so if we multiply any of these it will either give us the answer as 1 it will either give us the answer as 0 or minus 1 or that particular number whatever is uh, present which is greater than 1 here like in this case it is 6 or uh, like it could have been minus 6 now that we know that what are the elements that can be the answer of the multiplication so what we can simply do is that we can check for the pair of uh, sequences if they will be closed under multiplication or not we need not check for all of the sequences it will definitely give us our answer because we will have only these four instances which can be the answers of our uh, multiplication so if we multiply uh, even if we multiply in pairs uh, in each of the pair of elements in the given array then also we will be able to get our answer but how we should do this in an in a more efficient way instead of just using brute force on the array so we can do this by using a map and a vector pair so if we have this array 1 minus 4 4 and 4 first of all we will form a map which will consist of the frequency of each element present in the array. So here 1 is present once, 4 is present twice and minus 4 is present once. Now we will form a vector pair. Now why are we forming this pair? Because this pair is uh, something which will uh, help us in calculating uh, that uh, in calculating the multiplication of uh, every pair of array that is possible in the array every pair of sequence that is possible in the array so here as you can see that i have uh, stored one with one 
so here essentially what we are doing that we are placing the element as the first uh, part and the second part also we are placing the element so in the first part of the pair that is the first element of the pair will be the absolute uh, value of any number so suppose here like we have a uh, 4 and minus 4 so you can see that i have placed the absolute value of 4 and not minus 4 and in the second part of the pair we are actually placing the actual value that is uh, whether it's negative or positive so here you can see that i uh, for 1 and minus 4 it must be pretty clear to you right but why have i placed 4 two times here why is this like this so it is because we have 4 twice that means we can have this pair formed in the array that is 4 into 4 which will lead us to 16 right and if we get 16 then it is not present in the array and it will lead us to our answer being 0 that is the array is not closed under multiplication so if we have such a case then we will have to check uh, for uh, 4 by multiplying it 2 times right and if we have any element more than once then again the same thing will happen like if you consider that we have 4 in the array like a number of times many times then we have already discussed that uh, if we have any element greater than 1 present more than once so then uh, the array will not be closed under multiplication so if we just take care that uh, we we do the multiplication of uh, at least one pair of uh, similar numbers then we can ensure to get our answer as not closed under multiplication because this uh, 4 into 4 is going to lead to a greater value. So I hope that you have understood what it actually means what I am trying to say. So that's it guys this is the problem and when you will see the code you will understand even better how to do this problem how to approach this problem. So before that let us see the input output and constraints here the first line of input contains the number of test cases and then the first line of each test case there's a single integer n and uh, for every test case in the second line we'll be given the array and output will be 1 or 0 based on uh, the it is closed under multiplication or not so let us see the code guys the code will be in c++ here the first few lines are the number of uh, test cases as input then the number of elements and the array itself so we are just taking inputs here then we are forming a map so i already showed you that map we are using so that we can get the frequency of each element present in the array then uh, we are using c1 here so we will see why we are using c1 so now we are running this loop and we are taking input for each element and what we are doing that we will check whether the absolute value of that element that we have taken input is greater than 1. If the value is greater than 1, then we will do C1++, that is count uh, plus plus. So basically what this count is being used for, it is checking whether we have uh, more than one element which is greater than 1. Because in such cases, our array can never be closed under multiplication. So what we can do that here and here only we can check that if that is the case if uh, we have more than one value which is greater than one then we can uh, straight away make our answer as zero we can straight away print zero because our uh, array can never be closed under multiplication and for uh, each element we are also updating the value in the map because we need the frequency of each element if uh, by chance this case is not true so now uh, we will go to the main part of our logic when this case is not true that is uh, the count of uh, elements that are greater than 1 is uh, not greater than 1 actually. So now we are forming a vector pair. So here what we will do we will iterate through the map that is we will go to each and every element each and every unique element that was there in the array. We have the frequency of that element right. So now first we are storing that uh, every element that is uh, whatever elements are present in the array that is the key value of map in convert okay. Then we are checking if convert is less than 0 it means if we have a negative value in the map 
in that case we will convert we will convert it to a positive value why we are converting it to a positive value because we need to check in that manner we need to uh, multiply two elements in that manner right so that is why we will now make a pair so in making a pair we will keep the first value as convert because as i already told you that uh, we cannot keep a negative value here we have to keep the positive value but as a second part of this pair we will keep the original value of the uh, element that was there in the array whether it is negative or positive now we will check if the frequency of that particular uh, map element that we are referring to right now is greater than 1 if it is greater than 1 then we will again make a push into the vector of the same pair that we did earlier so that means if we have a uh, four present twice then we will have two pairs that is four 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 in the vector and the why we do that is that i have already explained to you in the explanation so i hope that it is clear to you because uh, we will always have a, a pair of sequence where we will have to multiply four into four which will be 16 uh, and 16 will not be present in the array so it will help us uh, define whether the element is uh, whether our array will be closed under multiplication or not now we are just uh, sorting the vector so the sorting is necessary because all the values will be scattered here and there uh, so yeah that's why we are sorting the vector and we will take a boolean value where we'll keep the answer as uh, one that is we will assume that uh, the array is closed under multiplication then we will run two loops here as you can see we are running a loop from 0 to the vector size and from i plus 1 to vector size so it means that uh, we have to compare each of the pairs uh, each of the pairs that can be formed in the array so here we will first check if answer is 0 then uh, we'll just break come out of the loop and if that is not the case then we will take the uh, second value of the array uh, second value of the pair and uh, we will store it in z and z2 that is for the ith loop that is for the outer loop and for the inner loop so that we can check for each and every pair and then we will multiply those two values and check whether they are present in the map or not if they are not present in the map then essentially they are uh, for any key that is not present in the map for that the value is zero so that is what we are checking and if that is the case then our answer will be zero and we will directly come out of the loop so that's it guys uh, and after that we are just supposed to print our answer so if the answer is uh, one then we will print one if the answer is zero then we will print zero so that's the problem guys um, it was just a ad hoc uh, solution based on the observations that we could make on the array so i hope that you have understood the solution and if not then you can post uh, in the comment section and uh, we'll be really happy to help you so you can also subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for all the updates you can also join our telegram group the link is given in the description box below please like the video if you understood it and i'll meet you next time